Firefighters up and down California are now watching the forecast by the hour. Everyone remembers the multiple catastrophes caused by the August 2020 lightning storms, and the risk has only gotten worse. The concern is those strikes in the, the higher elevations where the fuels are a lot heavier. We're looking at, you know, brush, timber, um, and that's the stuff that's critically dry right now, and that's where our, our potential uh, is a lot higher. For about three years, California was hit by a series of large fires, often propelled by wind events, the same wind that drives all the power shutoffs. Well, the threat of lightning poses different challenges. The difference between a, a dry lightning event and a wind event is the, obviously with the wind events we've seen that are predominantly out of the north, northeast, are pushing those fires to the south, southwest. And that's what we've seen here locally uh, time and time again since 2017. The incidents uh, involving lightning are a little more unpredictable. You're not really never, obviously never sure where the stri lightning strike is going to take place, but we do know that they are typically accompanied by a lot of erratic winds uh, as those fronts move through. So tonight, firefighters are asking everyone to remember the lessons learned in recent years and start thinking about those disaster plans. You look at the amount of destruction and devastation that took place in 2017 and how much better prepared uh, we as a fire service in our community was in 2020 and how much better uh, we did here locally. So, Wilson, is CAL FIRE making specific preparations right now for a potential fire? Are they doing anything concrete? Not exactly. They're, okay. I'd say the, the, the one thing they're really doing is watching the forecast like everybody. Now, if it starts to materialize in a bad way where they really look like they're going to have some, you know, some real challenges, you might see uh, a red flag alert issued. And that would, of course, uh, sort of launch the, the prepositioning of people and the upstaffing that we see when we know that there's, you know, a real fire threat mm -hmm. that has not happened yet. Okay. But obviously, it is certainly on the radar. Top of mind, no question. All right, Wilson, thank you. Firefighters are also busy with the Tamarack Fire in Alpine County. 23,000 acres have burned there since the lightning strike sparked it on the 4th of July. That fire forced the closure of a 26-mile stretch of Pacific Crest Trail and forced families out of their homes. Meteorologist Mary Lee joins us now with a look at the conditions crews are facing. Mary. Yeah, and keeping a very close eye on weather conditions and what firefighters are up against for the Tamarack Fire as well as the Dixie Fire. So let's get right to it here. And this is the, the Tamarack Fire and what firefighters are dealing with. This is south of Lake Tahoe. Temperatures in the upper 60s to upper 70s. Humidity at 30% with the southwesterly winds gusting up to about 13 miles per hour. And the Dixie Fire uh, burning in Butte and Plumas County is near paradise. Temperatures there in the upper 70s to upper 80s, 17 to 26 percent relative humidity. So uh, it is very dry, not just near the paradise area, but also near the South Lake Tahoe area, uh, gusting up to about 17 miles per hour right now near paradise, what firefighters are dealing with. And this is something I'm watching closely for you on high def Doppler. You can see all of those lightning strikes over Nevada as well as up over the Sierra and a closer look you can see all of those lightning strikes moving uh, right over Mammoth Lakes there and approaching as it pushes north into the Tahoe area. Of course we'll be watching this closely as we head through the rest of today with all of this activity to our east. What is up everybody and a warm welcome as always to Reality Decoded and thanks for tuning in to this latest installment brought to you from Ship Video Productions titled Lightning Strikes and I am going to try and keep this as short and sweet as possible and this is going to be an upload not a live presentation but we are following on a little bit from a recent live presentation from last week titled Thunder bolt in lightnings where we did look at the alarming amount and rise of reports on um, lightning strikes that are causing damage to a property in the case of the George Floyd Muriel wall and more um, drastically the deaths of tourists taking selfies on a tower in India and uh, the 
day, um, there has not been a day that has gone past since that stream that there hasn't been one or multiple um, reports or articles on lightning strike events around the globe. And we just started out hearing um, a couple of recent news reports from the last couple of days from the mainstream media reporting on um, some uh, fires being caused by lightning strikes. We are going to look at a little article now um, that is titled California Lightning Strike Map as a red flag warning is issued over severe thunderstorms. Now, at time of recording, it was only just yesterday. I'm ready for the life of me. I don't know why I didn't get the camera in and um, go and do some recording, but I was cooking a spot of supper at the time. But here in Toronto, Canada, where I currently reside, uh, that was a severe and huge thunderstorm that kind of left me with a migraine once it had gone and gone um gone by but during it it's it, it sort of a height it was um rumbling and flash uh pretty loudly and flashing pretty lightly so there is a picture of um some wildfire skies but a red flag warning has been issued the article starts out by saying for several parts of northern california with the national weather service predicting an abundant lightning and wind speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. The NWS Bureau that is located in the Bay Area, San Francisco, NorCal, um, released a red flag warning on Sunday afternoon um, for the northern parts of the state, including areas east of um, Bay Hills, Diablo Range, and the Santa Cruz Mountains. The advisory is in place from Sunday afternoon through to Monday, so that advisory has been and gone now. Um, but the agency warning of the potential for wildfires to be started by lightning as parts of the states are experiencing a summer heat wave and drought and have caused multiple large blazes over the last two weeks. Um, recent hot and dry conditions have created a very receptive um, vegetation to new lightning fires. Um, new fire starts may combine with outflow winds to cause a fire to rapidly grow in size and intensely before first responders can contain them. And the agency warned in the advisory. Um, that is what the agency warned, however, in the, the uh, advisory. So, as I said, it's been a little bit of a heat wave out on the West Coast, not just in Northern California, up here in Canada also, um, where we were having reports of wildfires and heat waves uh, in BC in particular. But alongside this dry lightning, the NWS also warns of winds up to 40 miles an hour and the potential for wet and dry thunderstorms through um, to Monday evening and with the agency predicting that the storms will become wetter as the days progress. A lightning strike map provided by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration on Monday morning showed that lightning had already struck parts of Northern California including the city of Lancaster um, as the storm made its way to towards the San Francisco Bay. There is that picture for you there. It isn't very clear or very big. But in a tweet on Sunday afternoon, Cal Fire um, said that it was prepared with extra crews for potential fires started by lightning, including 16 engines, four battalion chiefs, one safety officer, two dozers, and three crews. Um, there is a video of a firestorm over Canada that has caused 700,000 lightning strikes in one night. That is astronomical. We are going to come back and look a little bit deeper into this lightning strikes and possibly weaponized weather in a future stream, although I don't know when that will be at the moment. As I said, I did run a kind of do a quick and short brief update on some of these lightning strikes that are being reported on. 
because it seems to me that this is something that we need to be a little bit more aware of and when it is making a daily chat on the mainstream um, outlets then they really really do want us to pay attention to this and maybe they are misdirecting us away from the lightning's original source my suspect is this is indeed weaponized weather technology or maybe directed energy weaponry being used against us in this may in well be a scorched earth tactic being used and deployed by the elites and passing it off as the acts of mother nature um, and think uh, cast your mind back to 2019 and the fires that burnt down a paradise that seemed to be very selective in what they chose to burn down it was one of the very few times where forest fires seemed to neglect to burn down the forest but burnt down property um but the California Fire Department explains that a red flag warning is issued for weather events um, which may result in extreme fire behavior that will occur within 24 hours. And it's kind of interesting that they put in a speech um, or quotation marks, although they didn't put the uh, second one at the end of that, weather events. They kind of highlighted weather events. Are these man-made weather events or are these Mother Nature um, weather events you do? side but the weather watch um, is issued when weather conditions could exist in the next 12 to 72 hours and a red flag warning is the highest alert during these times extreme caution is urged by all residents because a simple spark can cause a major wildfire as well as i'm sure deep state highly advanced technology could but the santa lucia mountains and san benito county located less than three hours from san francisco have also been put under a red flag warning until monday 5 p.m which SF Gate reported was upgraded from an earlier fire weather watch. California, alongside other several um, West Coast states, has been badly affected by wildfires over the last two weeks as nine blazes are still currently active in the state that have burned through 171,817 acres. Again, is this scorched earth tactics being deployed by the deep state? Um, and that was at time of writing and according to the National Integracy in agency fire center the largest of the state fires um, is currently burning uh, at Beckworth complex which has destroyed 105,348 um, acres while being 75 um, percent 73 percent rather contained although California has been badly affected over the last two weeks the majority of fires have been recorded in Idaho and Montana I know Maiden, um, one of our trusted wench wrenches, uh, she lives in Montana and has been talking about some of these wildfires, um, with the former currently battling 17 blazes and the latter still tackling 18 wildfires. Um, the Midwest and the West Coast do seem to be burning, much to the delight, I'm sure of little thunder cunt thunberg who uh if you sure you remember her how dare you ran and when she told us that the world is burning and how dare we steal her future um and i bet she's creaming her little vegan knickers over the thought of this climate change um you know or, or this event that can be passed off to fuel her climate change um narrative and again if the deep state have the technology to control the climate and weaponized weather then you would be um almost certainly able to perfectly carry out um, and execute a false flag climate change event and is this one of those but um, it compares to 28,685 fires and 1,800,389 acres for this period in 2020 and 23,378 fires and 2,371,319 uh, acres in 2019 so the, the, the they are on a crease and um 
and there is a little bit of a narrative that you should really just stay in ho side uh, stay at home when uh, there are these weather advisory warnings and uh, lightning strike warnings in place uh, and again getting you to stay at home and inside more and more seems to be uh, what they are how bent on doing in uh, trying to push us towards a digital work environment perhaps um, who knows but uh, the, the the topic of uh, the, the this upload is at the lightning strikes and as i said we will come back at a later date and do a weaponized weather stream for your entertainment education and informative purposes um but that was one article of interest regarding lightning strikes in the last few um days and weeks that have resulted in some quite devastating um wildfires and uh we have not begun to quit on some of the recent reports so stay tuned because coming up right now are some reports on other recent lightning strikes it's literally within the last hour um there's been a couple of articles re um, circulating reporting of lightning strike injuries of at least four people at the grand canyon national park another tourist location similar to that tower in india um where 11 people were struck by lightning whilst taking selfies and ended up dead last thing they did was popped a selfie uh, but the grand canyon arizona um as kold news 13 are reporting um that four people were injured in a lightning strike at the grand canyon national park and according to information the national park surface someone reported multiple people being struck by lightning at the bright angel tailhead at around 250 on tuesday july the 20th that was yesterday um a 30 year old man and 28 year old woman were found um unresponsive but the man regained consciousness on his own the cb uh, cpr and advice life um, advanced life-saving interventions were performed on the woman and she regained a pulse before being taken to a hospital in Flagstaff. Air transportation, however, was not available because of the significant storm activity. So both patients were taken by ground transportation to the Flagstaff Med Medical Center, where the woman is now stable at a regional burn center. Um, but at least two other patients took themselves to the Grand Canyon Clinic for treatment um, of lightning splash injuries and the national park service reminds visitors to the park that if the sound of thunder follows a lightning flash within 30 seconds or less they should seek shelter in a building or a vehicle or proceed to the nearest bus stop to get on a park shuttle lightning can strike two points at up to 10 miles apart at the same time and grand canyon national park lightning strikes um, are on an average of 25,000 each time a year and the national park surface does provide information on how to be lightning safe here maybe something you might want to consider is lightning becoming more of a threat to us in our everyday life um, lifestyle um, uh, than ever it did before. Remember, they used to say, "Oh my goodness, the light, the, the odds are getting struck by lightning are astronomical." Well, uh, that was before 2021 came along and threw normality, reality, and logical explanations out of the window. Um, so that was one of the couple of articles in the last hour that have circulated and surfaced on um, these strikes of individuals at the Grand Canyon. Again, another tourist location where um, that they, they may or may not have been taking selfies but if I just click out of this one we can come and look uh, again we're at DDG at DuckDuckGo for those of you who don't know what DGG is um, 
but lightning strikes is all i've put in to the search engine as you can see there and the local news that was the one we just saw 37 minutes ago 12 minutes ago another one um about the grand canyon uh 13 minutes ago uh, national um park service another report of those um injuries at the grand canyon lightning strike mounted this ford super judy's interior that was just two minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. Again, reports of the Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon three hours ago. Um, Fort Worth teen survives a lightning um, strike and he's still recovering a year later. There was the article we looked out about the red flag warnings issued in California. Um, there is the lightning, uh, the report of the 11 killed by lightning in India chances of dry lightning fall but here's when the bay area could see strikes monsoon promises much needed rain for the parched west but it also brings the prospect for lightning strikes um, and that could mean more fires um, two days ago two houses um, two house fires reported in austin area um, after lightning strikes once again a lightning strike kills a pa a golfer pennsylvania from two eight days ago and that is a second incident at a golf club um golf course if you remember if you did see thunderbolts and lightning um that stream from last week we did put a report about a teenager um who hit a golf ball at 88 miles an hour of all speeds um that was then struck by lightning and was caught on his tiktok upload um and here is another report of that a man 71 dies after lightning strike at um a golf course in pennsylvania uh, another one uh, uh, reporting the same thing and he happened to be a army vet um lightning strike ohio police and city inspectors have conflicting takes on just what happened to that george floyd memorial we featured in that thunderbolt in that lightning stream again 11 people being mentioned in india lightning strike sparks a house fire in um man manchacha manchaka manchaka i don't know how to pronounce that but another house fire being reported by um lightning strikes pg and e uh you may remember those from 2019 in their blackouts it also coincided with some of those um fires in northern california um that burnt down paradise uh are they diverting you know were the reasons that they were carrying out all those blackouts in rolling um outages were they redirecting our um power and energy to technology that was causing the lightnings or directing at the energy um and and was that a, a uh, the, the purpose behind all of those blackouts back in uh, September of 2019. A corridor man, there we go, about the golf course again. Um, watch, there's that teen who hit the ball at 88 miles an hour. Is a teen's uh, golf ball hit by lightning. Um, repairs must be made at a Harrison um, County Courthouse following lightning strikes. That was a day um, ago. And as you can see, there is literally no end to reports of um, lightning strikes, uh, many of them within the last few hours. And one at the very, very bottom of there saying lightning strikes kill more people than ever ever before so you can just see an example when i just brought to you a couple of quick brief um re reports on on some of these articles re regarding lightning strikes it does seem to be an ongoing trend and there does seem to be an awful alarming amount of um death and destruction being caused as a result of these lightning strikes again guys make of it what you will i'm just um bringing you for entertainment education and informative purposes um my thoughts and opinions on some recent mainstream reports on this as to what is causing it is it mother nature is it man-made technology one can only theorize and wonder but uh, i'm putting my money certainly on the ladder as a more likelihood is what is causing these um this destruction 
destruction and these deaths uh, that are being accounted for as the result of lightning strikes. As I said, guys, we will be hopefully bringing a weaponized weather stream possibly this weekend. Don't hold me to that. Lots and lots going on here behind the scenes. It's ship video productions that isn't involving ship video productions right now as to why uh, uploads and live streams have been a little bit um fragmented and scattered and not as regularly as they once were but hopefully you found this a little bit interesting um and hopefully we will catch you in the next installment brought to you from ship video productions here at reality decoded so hopefully we will see you then till then take care may the force be with us and be excellent to each other and i'm guessing to say watch the skies you never know what is gonna be heading your way a holographic alien or a man-made lightning bolt so till next time take care folks see you soon